So welcome everybody. Today we're going to take a look at this fine ASSD 715. So this is a very specialized tool. It's a very old tool as well. This one was probably made in the 70s. But this is actually a 42 volt power tool. A lot of the German companies had these 42 volt lines. So you would obviously need a transformer to step that your mains voltage down. In this case I have the official fine transformer for 220 volts. The part number is ESB63F. So it looks like it puts out 42 volts at 1.5 amps. And then it has this special connector on here. I don't know why it needs to be that heavy duty if it's only 1.5 amps, but that's like a connector that you would see in um, like the oil and gas industry or military. I don't know if I've ever heard of this brand. It looks like it says Balls Norm. Balls CEE Norm. If you remember when I got those uh, fine catalogs, I scanned in all of the uh, service manuals, and this was actually one of the ones that was in there. So we can take a look, quick look at the, the specs here. So up to iron screws, M4 or 532nd, well that's a pretty tiny screw. Max torque is 1.45 foot-pounds. So tension volts, uh, 42 full load, speed, 1000 RPM. 40 watts, net weight 1.8 pounds. So it says the machine is supplied with a two core cable without earth wire and must not be earthed. The machine is provided with a reversing switch for clockwise and anti-clockwise rotation. It must not be operated when the machine is running. The screwdriver can be adjusted for three ranges of torque by simply exchanging the pressure swing spring. Uh, it's, I think that's a fine number 57 in the uh, draw the diagram. So here's the here's the parts diagram that they're referring to. So if you look at 57, 57 is this, this big spring in there. That's a pretty large spring, or extended out to provide different levels of torque. So this is almost like a a really old electronic torque wrench. So what must happen is when you get to that torque setting, uh, this thing will start, uh, basically it'll turn into a double ratchet where you try, you try to put force on it, it will actually back out and it won't turn. And all this was hand drawn. This was not done by a computer. This was done by a human on a piece of paper much larger than this. Um, I just have 11 by 17. So here's also the parts list. So here's a listing of the different compression springs that you can replace that with. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and um, dive into this thing. I think the first thing we'll do is we'll take a look at this transformer. We'll get a little look inside. See what, if anything, we can change the taps to work at a different voltage or if any uh, repairs or anything needs to be done. Okay, so looking at the transformer, that looks like an inspection symbol maybe. So it's either 06 or 09, seventh month. Uh, they probably have a QA guy going around inspecting these. If, they, if this was in service until 2009, that's pretty amazing. Uh, but we have somebody's, it looks like somebody's name up here. Dick, H A something H. I don't know what that says up there. That's about it. There's a fine symbol on the back. Fine sticker actually. We'll go ahead and take these two screws out and try to pop the lid on this. And it does look like this was probably rewired at one time. Oh wow, this thing. This is a lot more complex than I thought it was going to be. It looks like we actually got some circuitry down in here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to take this off first so we can disconnect that uh, this connector. You can tell it really was designed to be beat up. It's got the rubber gaskets everywhere. I don't know if it has an IP rating. Because there is a symbol on there, I think that means don't get this wet symbol. So 
that's been on there for a while. It looks like the rubber's still pretty good there. All right, so we got and then we got some uh, Phillips. I don't think I need to take that backing plate off. And you can see they got some thread locker applied in there on both of those. So I don't know why there's two screws in there. Yeah, this was definitely a professional job. You can see they crimp, actually crimped a, a ferrule onto that. So there's our connector. We'll try to clean that up as best we can. All right, so now we can take the cover off here. So I'll go ahead and um, take off. I don't know what that white stuff is there on those screws. I'm going to take off this handle because we're going to, I think we're going to try to clean this up. As, we'll give it a, uh, a mild restoration. I'm not going to make it look like new, but. It looks like they got some rib nuts here. It looks like it needs a little bit of body work. Got a couple of dents up here, but not too bad. All right, so now we're on to the main assembly here. And it does kind of look like there's a big circuit board down in there. But you can definitely tell this this was designed by a professional. You got this big this big uh, piece of phenolic material to separate the primary and secondary, the high voltage and lower voltage sides. You got a, obviously a fuse in there, and you got a terminal block for the wires. So go ahead and um, take the cord off of this. I think it's kind of. It was in there pretty good. It definitely put some thread locker on it. So it's looking like this thing that was never designed to come off because it's actually part of the potting. It's kind of embedded in there. Well, maybe maybe it does unscrew. Yeah, it'll unscrew. But the nut's gonna have to stay in there. Yeah, so they put some kind of thread locker on that one as well. Yeah, I can see down in there the potting compound is kind of leaked out of the of this phenolic and it's way down in there. So I think I'm probably going to leave it like that. It really isn't a good reason to take it out any further than this. Other than trying to get this metal cleaned up. It looks like this is all uh, filled with co potting compound. You can see here, there's a little um, phonetic uh, block. And that's what is mounted, the cord grip was mounted to, and this block and the fuse holder is mounted to. So probably on the very bottom of this, there's a circuit board. It's probably under about an inch of potting compound, so we're not going to get to it. Okay, so we're on to the main tool here. So the only thing I see that's missing from the outside is there's supposed to be a hook here uh, for hanging it from a, 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 a balancer. So I'll have to find a way to replace that if it's worth it. Looks like we're missing a screw right here too. So let's go ahead and um, pop this cover off so we can uh, take the cord off. All right, here's the reversing switch, and all that basically does is um, it swaps the poles, the uh, the AC poles. And you can see all that. All this is is just a lever on this little tiny micro switch here, and what that actually looks like a it's a cherry. It is. It's a cherry micro switch. It's a very high end. Micro switch. You often see those in um, mechanical keyboards now. Let's see, we got a capacitor over here. I think that's about all that's going on here on this side. Yeah, I like the threaded inserts. Look at the detail of this mold right here. Looks like we got the hot wire. 
only this terminal right here, but the the neutral wire is going to the switch it's soldered directly onto it. Look how tight they wound that wire. So they soldered a wire from this terminal to this terminal, but no no uh, service loop or strain relief in that. And it looks like we got a little pinch right here. That wire got pinched somehow at one point. But we'll go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and pop the switch off now. It's very possible that this thing's been serviced. It looks like some of these components may not be original. So it looks like we're probably going to have to do some cut some wires here. Unless there, unless there's a terminal in here somewhere. This was an extension cord. You can see the ground wire right there was cut off. So we'll go ahead and uh, take these. There's eight screws here. We'll see what taking these off does. Yeah, you can tell somebody's serviced this before. If you look at these, um, these slotted screws have been cammed over. Somebody either over tightened it or wasn't using the right size screwdriver. I wonder why they went to the trouble of actually putting these countersunk washers in there. Okay, so we got those eight screws out. So let's see if anything wants to come apart here. All right, so I think that was, yeah, that's actually, it goes behind the switch. That's a spring for the switch. So it seems to me like this little piece of metal here is kind of out of place. So let's see if we can pop that off. Maybe that'll expose something. Okay, yeah. So we take this little strip of metal off and it exposes a couple of screw terminals right under them. So they did think about, and that's actually, you can get to the brushes too from there. I can see the brushes in there too. Let's see if we can pull that out. There's not too much left of that one. So we have to get some new brushes for this. So it looks like I'm going to have to cut these wires. I can't really see any way around it. it looks like the, the ring terminals are too big to get through this, this slot. I think maybe the there's something holding it up. And then these other wires going to the, the field windings. Um, I don't see any disconnection points in there. So we'll probably just totally rewire it because I we have the schematic. Alrighty, here goes. I'm cutting everything. According to this view AB right here, which is up, up here, a cross section, there's two screws that's holding that in. So to get to those, we have to take this part out first. Right, so that just fell out. Well, that's, a, that's a very precision made gear right there. Okay, I finally did get that the armature to drop out. Just took a couple hits with the hammer. So there's our 42 volt armature there. We got the air redirector. I see those two screws. They're way, way in there. I'm not sure if I have a screwdriver long enough. Let's try this one. Alright, yeah, I got, can get that one. And there's those little, so those very, very tiny screws. Still, still got the field windings in there. Those have to come out first. So I could see why I couldn't get those ring lugs through. Because they have to, they're bigger than these holes. So 
yeah, that would have been an expensive part to make there. That's like a it's a it's like a ceramic. I guess for heat reasons they couldn't make it out of plastic, and it needed to be non-conductive uh, because both both the brushes are mounted on it, so that's why they had to go with a ceramic. Okay, I think we're we're down to bare parts now on this side. So it looks kind of like um, you can put a hook wrench on this. That's what this little slot I think is for. So how does it... It's a coincidence that I bought these um, hook wrenches just a week ago and now I was saying to myself I don't have a use for things that small but it looks like this one's gonna work. Yeah, there we go. There is a spring in here, so you gotta be careful. There's a ball bearing that just came out. It looks like it went all the way in there, so I have to remember that. But I still need to get this collar out and this bit out somehow still. So I'm not sure where this spring came from. So this is like a torque limiter. So you see these two knobs here. There's actually uh, a matching ones down in this shaft. It's kind of hard to see, but there are. So I think the way this is working is when you hit a specific torque, there's a spring in here that's going to give way. Yeah, I can. F if you look here, this this is spring loaded. That spring's going to give way, and this is going to shoot backwards, and it'll actually it'll actually slip. So I probably should have read the uh, second page here of that service manual because there's a whole section here for dismantling. It gives you some very detailed instructions on how to do it. But I also noticed over here after 900 duty hours the machine should be completely dismantled as described under paragraph 6 and all parts should be thoroughly cleaned. So they give you kind of a schedule on when you're supposed to uh, do some maintenance. So let's see if we can pull this um, this plate off. So I'm just basically turning it by hand because I don't think it's going to take very much to pull the, that off that bearing. Yeah, it's coming off. All right. And I think I'm going to leave that these these two bearings on here. I don't think I have the right extractor to pull that off. Okay, so it looks like this thing just pushes right through. So I'm wondering if maybe this part doesn't come off, it's just all attached. I was thinking that this was a collet that would tighten. But from what I see down there, it's all one piece. It looks to be press fit in there. I don't think it's worth removing, but it doesn't look like there's a bearing down there. I think it's just a machine surface. So it's just basically like a sleeve bearing. So the question is, does this thing actually even come out? It looks to me like there's a this is a tapered shaft. So if anybody has any ideas on how to get that bit out of there, um, I don't want to want to bang on it with a hammer. Once I know which direction it's going to go in. As you can see, it's definitely a lot different than the assembly and the drawing. I don't know if this is some kind of common common uh, holder standard. But it it looks like that's press fit in there. Um, I guess I could try putting it in a hydraulic press and seeing if it budges any. I guess we'll leave that for later. I think the final thing to take apart is this guy. So this is just a little trick because that that screw is a little too big for that shaft. So there we go, we got that pulled off, a little tiny gear, and then this will come off, so that's good. 
Okay, this took me forever to figure out. Apparently there's a couple of really tidy ball bearings up in here that need to be removed in order to get this to push out. And it looks like one of these bearings came apart. So what I'll do here is I'll I'll bag up all these small ball bearings. And uh, before we put it back together, we'll try to get make sure we got them all back in there. So yeah, that, that's where this ball bearing was. It was in this, they were in these little slots right here. So it looks like they built their own bearing. Because you see the part of the bearing right here is actually built right into the shaft. Doesn't look like that's press fit on there. It's like it's all part of the same shaft. Okay, so finally we got the spring. And I believe that's it. All right, well, I think that's going to wrap this up. Next time we'll try to clean everything and um, re-lube, get some new brushes, and then we can uh, test everything out then. All right, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I'll catch you guys next time.